My name is Elijah Mwangi, a TV journalist based in Kenya, producing development-oriented content. And so today, we are looking at land access here in Kakamega County, Western Kenya. Agriculture is the main source of livelihood for rural households in Kakamega. But with increasing demand for land, the pressure grows. Many households already only have small plots of land of their own or none at all. Leasing land is common here and it's very important for the locals because it's a source of livelihoods. But the tenure insecurity of at least lands leads to less investments when it comes to sustainable management of soil. The soil protection and rehabilitation for food security in Western Kenya is part of a larger program, the One World No Hunger, an initiative of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. We are working closely with GIZ and the counties of Bugoma, Kakamega and uh, Siaya. This cooperation with these local partners is very important for the traction of our work. One of the key issues that the farming communities have mentioned as a challenge is land tenure. We are working with a local community-based organization, Shibuya Community Health Workers, and they've been very active in mobilizing and working with the communities. Shibuya Community Health Workers is a community-based organization that was founded by grassroots women in 1999 mm -hmm. to respond to health crisis that was happening in this country by then. Our work on land is a, the most important uh, work that we have been doing in this community because it's around uh, helping to understand the legal institutions that govern land. It is also about helping women to understand that it is important for them to be part of land governance. In our laser process, is a land leasing. We have been developing community-driven land lease guidelines. And um, this is actually a very exciting program because even our own government does not have a real streamlined uh, guideline that uh, talks about land leasing. This has been a really consultative process where communities have been involved to draw their own guideline that spells from how do you actually confirm that this land belongs to the right person. Agriculture squarely is the backbone of our country, Kenya. Our livelihood, our people of over 42 million, they depend on agriculture in Kenya. If somebody takes or releases a piece of land, they should be terms. They agree. They should be understanding. With the public participation, people will, uh, will understand the needs, what it means by leasing it. The land uh, tenure systems that we have are not structured, and this tries to address that. And if we can have a concerted and uh, clear, structured way of getting land uh, tenure and uh, lease, it will be very helpful. Supported by Shibuya community health workers, the locals here are developing guidelines built on the experiences that many farmers have had with land leasing over the years. In this area, we don't have large scale farmers. It is small scale farmers. So we are close to each other. That is why we have a lot of complaints. In this community, it is unfortunate that three quarters of the land is still registered to our, our forefathers. So through this land lease uh, guidelines, it is also assisting us to tell people on how they should go in succeeding, filing succession, so that they can own land. The first step is the sensitization meeting at the ward level. We wanted real ownership, real involvement from everyone in the world. So we identified four major stakeholders. This is like from the agricultural office, the provincial administrators, the farmers, the widows, and the youth from the community. After the ward level, whereby we have 40 people, we go to the sub-location level. Each sub-location has 30 people. From the 30 people in the sub-location, we then form a committee of 15 people from each sub-location. Then from the 15 people which forms a drafting committee, we get now seven people from the 15 people at the sub-location. The seven meet together from the four sub-location to fine-tune the document before it is published and launched. After the launch, this is where we have a way forward. The way forward is what do we want to do with these guidelines? We must sensitize it 
in the entire community because we have other people which, whom we have not reached. So we have to go in public forums. Land leasing, if done properly, is really uh, a quicker way of enhancing uh, food security at household level to grow their food, but also to grow food for income generating activity. It's not like buying land. Buying land, you need to have a lot of money. Leasing land is actually uh, manageable by most people in the society. I want to encourage that uh, this particular exercise should be spread across the county to come up with proper guidelines that can even help in uh, local courts and be become a legal document to assist this ward and even in the county as a whole. Being a farmer, I feel that I want to know how we can make it a better process for all of us. That if I lease land, I'm comfortable with it. I don't feel like, oh, I'm losing my money, or maybe my crops will be spoiled. Uh, you see, the more I fear those things, the more poverty comes. Eh? Land has become very, very scarce. And having become very, very scarce, uh, a lot of people want to use means, sometimes means from outside the book. The only way we can benefit is if the person leasing the land benefits and the person who leased the land benefits. And then we have, as a society, we have uh, increased food production. These realities should be seen as just one dimension of the many ways in which farmers here in Kakamega County are being affected by issues to do with land access and land ownership. It's complex and sometimes an overwhelming problem, but what we found out is that land lease agreement forms a key starting point in addressing issues to do with land tenure insecurity. How land is subdivided, how land is owned and managed, that affects how people protect their land. And uh, we are keen to see that how can the counties put in place to actually access and own land. We have land in the community that it's not being used. It will be a good move to rehabilitating some of the uh, of the degraded parts of the land. Because you go along the community, there are set, certain areas that the big gullies, eroded, poor soils, those are the areas they usually lease. So I'm sure the owners of such parcels would be very glad to lease out because somebody starts to make the soil better for them. So we are really looking upon um, the Department of Agriculture, the county governments to really come up and now upscale because we did not walk the journey alone. Please, let's walk the journey together. In the agriculture sector, we are supporting quite a number of policies, national irrigation policy, and one key one is national agricultural soil management policy. This is the policy where we are working together, GIZ and the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, to develop a framework for sustainable use of soils, mostly sustainable land use management here in Kenya. So the policy proposes various methods and mechanisms through which people, especially the youth, or even others, who may need land to use it for agricultural purposes and don't have it, can access it. Once the guidelines are launched, the community members are in a position to access these guidelines together with the official land lease agreement form at the chief's office, setting way for mutually beneficial land lease agreements in future. Our officers will be custodians of this document so that when, when we are having challenges and crisis in relation to the same, we reflect in, in our public barasas, we remind people what we came up with. We disseminate the document through our forums. This policy will help even Mwanaichi Mdogo. I feel it's important even if this uh, program can be done all over Kenya because land leasing is not only in Isuka West, it is all over. I looked at the documents and the, what they have done. I think it is something that we can emulate and uh, extend to the rest of the uh, parts of the county. As a county, we will give it support through the extension staff who can be able to uh, bring it uh, knowledge to the farmers. The guidelines are good. 
we should go a step further and have this uh, localized in the county assemblies. So the counties is part of their responsibility to come up with legislation that will make people access land easily. So I think the best that we could do is to legalize these guidelines so that now they are in law and now we can spread it to other wards in the county. We synthesize committees at every level of the ward and then we come and pass legislation in our county assembly. It's also very critical that we develop a broader connection of land access, sustainable soil management, as well as food security, and how this understanding is supported by actions from local and national governments. Access to land, of course, is right at the foundation of food production and productivity. We've just gone through a process of uh, looking at the implementation, particularly of SDG2, the issue of accessibility to land and soil fertility are very, very intricately tied. So we have come up with recommendations that will enable us to achieve um, our objectives within the sustainable goals, which will in turn um, address the zero hunger that we, we so desire. Locally-led initiatives are the backbone to sustainable solutions and so should be supported wherever and whenever possible. And remember, the structural barriers to sustainable land management are known and well documented. And so it's the high time we push further, seeking solutions to make investments a reality for all.